What's up, King of Queens fans, and welcome to the Shuddy Uppy Podcast, where we talk about King of Queens, the best TV show ever. I'm Coach Dusty, and I am joined by my lovely co-host, Jenna Maureen. How are you doing tonight, Jenna? Good. How are you, Dusty? <sighs> I'm tired. I'm tired. Baseball got me <laughs> wore out this week. Um, we have an awesome, awesome show tonight. We are joined by a former King of Queens actor. He played on the episode Catching Hell, Season 7, Episode 20. Um, let's see. Mr. Shane Bomell. he was born and raised in Calif- uh, Long Beach, California. Started acting at the age of five. His first movie was at the age of six, um, where he played in Daddy Daycare, which I love that movie, by the way. It's a great movie. Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> Anything with Eddie Murphy in it is just the best. Wow, well, I didn't know you were in that. That's really cool. Yep, the jump start to my short-lived career. <laughs> <laughs> um, his uh, movies and TV shows include Daddy Daycare, Over the Hedge, Wild Hogs, another favorite of mine. Um, he was Voices in Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, Curious Joys in Ice Age, um, TV shows was Phil the Future, Emperor's New School TV show, and of course, King of Queens. Um, his acting career ended when I uh, when he went to college at Cal Poly uh, San Luis Obispo for business. Currently working for the family business down here, down there in uh, Long Beach, the Baumel Brothers Electrical. Please welcome Shane Baumel. What's up, Shane? <laughs> Hey, thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you, man. We're glad to have you on, man. This is exciting. Thank you very much. You were in a very hilarious episode of King of Queens. It's a good yes, one. That whole scene with you in it was just awesome. <laughs> one of a kind, for sure. So t- tell us a, a little bit uh, um, about you know your career in King of Queens. And, I mean, you were in that one episode. Tell us about that episode and you know, what it was like and, you know, how, how it was with uh, Kevin James, of course, you know, throwing baby carrots at him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, it was, yeah, I, I was super young, so I don't remember a ton. Thankfully when I, I was a kid, I had my mom driving me everywhere to and from all my, uh, films and stuff. And so she remembered a few stories, kind of refresh my brain a little bit, but, uh, basically from what I remember, uh, well, first off, I did not realize that when I was on the show that when we were going to be at Shea Stadium, that I hate to spoil it, but it was just the, uh, you know, uh, setting, it was oh, man. the background. So I-, I was a little disappointed. I was too young to really put it together. Um, in terms of the actual scenes, I, I just kind of remember the director, you know, he's I-, I was a baseball player growing up, so I always had a pretty good arm, even – at eight when I was throwing carrots at the guy, (laughs) but uh, he was just like, you know, feel free to just throw them as hard as you want. And uh, plenty of scenes I went through and missed uh, goes to show about my aim. But uh, there were a couple times where I hit him spot on. The one time I remember the carrot exploded and got a good laugh from the audience (laughs) and stuff. Um, Really, really the only other story that I remember was every time, you know, when the, the ball was hit my way, you know, the slow motion, he reaches out, steals it from me. That scene was recorded like nine or 10 different times. And each time after he stole the ball from me, he would always go up to me at the end of the scene, as well as my mom and just be like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like it's part of the thing. And, you know, obviously it's part of it. So there's no problems or anything, but yeah. you know, I was super young and he, he was very friendly. Uh, I didn't get to interact with the whole cast a bunch, but a few of the guys I did, even a like uh, Jerry Stiller, for example, uh, he was one. You know, I didn't record one scene with him, but throughout the whole uh, the time we weren't recording, or I'm sitting there in between takes, and he would just kind of walk by and in the background go like Shane Baumel. <laughs> I, my young self would always turn around and be like, uh, like what? What's the instruction? Or he's like, oh, nothing, and would just keep walking by. And, stuff like that. So uh, everyone on the cast was super nice. Uh, I've never really had a bad experience with anybody and any of the stuff I've done, but you know, nothing changes with this one. So nice. 
That's awesome. And, you know, speaking of Jerry Stiller, you you were basically the son of uh, Jerry Stiller's daughter in that um, yeah. scene, um, Amy Stiller. Right, how, yeah. how was she? Uh, you know, from what I remember, friendly. Uh, we didn't actually really interact a ton besides when we were filming, obviously. But I remember her uh, – well, I don't remember. My mom always talked about in between takes, she would just be sitting next to her. My mom and her would just chat it up and stuff. So again, just kind of goes back to the the kindness of everybody on the set. Yeah. Uh, Can you tell us what the audition process was like for the part? If you remember. Yes. Yeah. Uh, weirdly, I, I do remember all the auditions because every time I walk into an audition, it is just a big group of, Everybody and anybody from ages a couple years lower than me, a couple years older than me. Uh, so every time I go into an audition, you know, I get that knot in my stomach. Yeah. Uh, you're competing against 300 other people at least. Um, the first uh, – there were two auditions, the audition, the callback, and then I got the job. The audition itself, you know, normal, same sort of thing that anyone would probably imagine – uh, the callback, that's when, you know, a couple of the directors, the producer came in. My role wasn't big enough, I would assume, where, you know, Kevin James or anyone else was in on it. Wow. Uh, a lot of times in callbacks, sometimes the the lead actors are in on the uh, audition. So I just kind of, when, when you're that young, realistically, the only thing that the directors look for is, of course, you know, deliver the lines in a way they can imagine, but it really just comes down to following instructions. You know, though, I, I don't remember exactly what they told me, but they would tell me, you know, to do this, do that, try it this way, try it that way. And it's really just not so much about the delivery, but as long as you can kind of follow the directions and understand, I, I guess I was pretty good at that as a kid and kind of led to a lot of good stuff. So yeah. nice. That's awesome. Yeah. You definitely have some awesome things on your list. Oh yeah. For sure. Because I you know, didn't realize super, that you were in, so that's really yeah. Cool. It, it it's super funny because you know as I got older and I was in school and just kind of made new friends. All, all my friends growing up kind of knew I was in the acting stuff, but once I went off to college and started to meet all these new people, I would never be the one to say anything to them about this is the stuff I did. They always had a good way of finding out somehow. But uh, yeah, with with them, I didn't really realize until college. But kind of everything you listed off, like that's my age growing up, those were the movies we watched. And so to be a part of all of those, whether it was bigger roles, like some of the movies you named, or even just additional voices, like being a part of all those shows that obviously I grew up and watched because I was in them, but to realize that so many people around me that I grew up with loved all those movies as well. And they are, like you said, they're, I think they're pretty good movies with or without me in them. So it it was just kind of a, it was a trip. Yeah. Did uh, so how old acting are you ever? Now oh, go ahead, Jenna. Sorry, Dustin. Sorry. How old are you now? Then I'm 26. I okay. just turned 26, so few years removed from all the acting stuff. <laughs> yeah. Did um your acting uh, ever get in the way of your schooling? Uh, it did get in the way of schooling. Uh, most of the time, the teachers were all pretty fascinated with it. Nice. Uh, even though I am just a little bit south of L.A., uh, not really anybody in my schools were a part of the entertainment industry. So most of the time, there were never any issues if I had to leave class early or miss a day for filming or auditions or stuff. Where it did start to run into some issues is I was a big baseball player growing up. I played in high school. I played growing up. And uh, it's the after school stuff, the baseball stuff, where that was really important to me at the time growing up. So, you know, sometimes I would miss games and practices for auditions. Other times I would miss auditions for games. And it got to the point where my my agent was kind of like, you need to pick one. And uh, that was kind of the end of everything. And I kind of stuck with baseball, school, all that stuff. Nice. Um, Yeah, so... But in terms of kind of doing everything together, there was never really a ton of issues up until a little bit later on when I was in high school. And at which point, acting was fun. My mom threw me into some acting classes 
and I, I loved it. It's not like I was forced to do it or anything, but as I got older, that the love for acting kind of fell below a few things. I got you. You know, as a baseball guy, I'm a huge baseball guy. I have my own baseball business. I coach school ball. What position did you play when you played baseball? Yeah, growing up, I was a middle infielder my entire life. Nice. I got to high school. They moved me into the outfield and kind of stuck there for four years. Awesome. Did you play yeah, I did not. Uh, that's a story for another time. But uh, <laughs> I did go out to, you know, see and just wasn't the best fit. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. Um, acting in front of a law, uh, live audience, how nerve wracking was it for you as a kid? Yeah. You know, even now, public speaking never been a real issue of mine. Uh, as a kid, you know, I didn't really understand everything, what was going on. And there were probably only a couple shows where I was in front of the live audience. Uh, King of Queens, of course, was one of them. It was, uh, overwhelming, but again, it kind of mixed in with the fact that I was super young, so I didn't entirely understand what was going on. It's actually funny. I, I do remember one of the scenes where I was throwing baby carrots I don't know. I, I don't remember where the carrot must have flown to, but the audience started cracking up. <laughs> and I just remember them all laughing, and I didn't understand what was going on. So I started laughing too. Um, obviously, there's no like outtakes or deleted scenes right. in the shows, but I was just cracking up because they thought it was funny. I must have done something funny. But uh, overall, again, too young to really understand yeah. everything. Yeah. But so I wasn't too nervous. I feel like if I was doing it now, I'd be a little bit more nervous working in front of a live audience. But yeah. they're they're there to see Kevin James and the entertainment. Yeah, they always have a good time. So, man, if my parents brought me baby carrots to a baseball game, I'd be throwing them too. <laughs> I would be doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's it's too easy. Yes, one of one of the opposing fans or something. I don't. I'm a big sports guy. All my SoCal teams down here who, yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're not that good, but you know, I go to the games and stuff and you just think, man, baby carrots. That's yeah. Pretty terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watch the Dodgers then. I'm an angels fan. Okay, an angels fan. A little further South. So <laughs> born and raised going to angels, ducks, yeah. hockey. Those are my two big teams. So nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm hoping your angels uh, turn it around because you guys got a you got a good squad. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, don't get me started, man. <laughs> we're we're running out of time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially with Mike Trout. You know, he's what in his thirties now. Yeah, early thirties. Yeah, something's got to happen, especially with Trout on that team. I I hear you. Uh, I, I'm a big Cubs yeah, fan. You know. So. My dad grew up outside Chicago, okay. so I grew up a Chicago fan in all sports. I'm not a Southsider fan. Oh, so you got you got your moment of glory a few years ago. I did. Ago. I, I like did. It. I cried too when it happened, but not as much as my dad. My dad's been waiting for that for his right. whole life. So <laughs> totally, but yeah, totally. it was great for sure. No doubt. Yeah, I can sit here and dream about something like that. Angels. I was too young, and then kind of my other teams. Not really relevant right now. So oh, yeah, I remember when the Angels won it, when they had that uh, yeah that rally monkey going for them and all that stuff. One of one of yeah. the <laughs> yep. that's awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so <laughs> I wanted to talk about this in uh, the episode uh, mayo on a hot dog. <laughs> what do you think? Oh yeah, that's where I first heard. Yes, yeah, same here. <laughs> um, what. what didn't really uh, think much of it at the time. Uh, I have, of course, tried it. Um, eh. Yeah. Eh. Um, it would not be my go-to. Would I do it again? Or if it was handed to me? Sure. I, I think I was talking to you earlier. You're a big fan, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, I like it. Ever since I okay. saw it on this, I like it. But it's got to be Duke's mayonnaise. Duke's mayonnaise is the only mayonnaise okay. to eat. It's the best mayonnaise ever. You guys don't have that. I got to look into that. It's a southern thing. I was going to say, 
Sure. I was going to say it doesn't sound familiar, but definitely seems like something to try. Oh, so good, man. Really good. It's good on everything. Mayo on a hot dog. One of a kind. <laughs> I, I used to, when I was little, I used to only put mayonnaise on my hot dog. <laughs> Nothing else. Mayonnaise anymore. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just want one of my roommates over here shot a look as soon as I said mayo on a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I thought too. And then, you know, and it's even funny once you guys reached out to me, I had to try it one more time. You know, yeah. I haven't had it in a while. I had to make sure, you know, I figured it was going to be a topic of conversation. I had to give it a shot. <laughs> Still kind of, <laughs> yeah. but I do it again. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah. One of my favorite parts in this episode is when Doug is walking through the, um, tunnel to get to the seats and he just he gives up and he's getting ready to crouch in the corner and start eating his food that yeah yeah other guy's like what are you doing <laughs> but you're better than this oh uh, <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> no, it's funny you know obviously when you guys reached out i had to refresh my memory a little bit it's been a few years since i've watched uh, the episode and as i was watching it i realized i remembered a lot more than i thought i would even the, I mean, obviously the parts I was in, but even like the dinner party and all this stuff, I'm like, oh, I, I remember all yeah. this stuff. Like, yes. So you, you said you kind of watch it now, like when, if it's like on and you see it or do you like, yes. Well, so every time I'm, I'm scrolling through late nights and looking for TV shows. Cause I think I meant, yeah, I, we all know that King of Queens on satellite is on like four yeah. different <laughs> channels, just playing nonstop. I've realized that. I've managed to find my episode in like the 2 a.m. hour now as opposed to the 9 p.m. hour. That was, you know, <laughs> that was the glory days, all right? right? Um, all, all these all these sitcoms, uh, you know, I get home from work. I start scrolling through the TV. If it's on, I'll throw it on. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these ones, you know, uh, kind of leads me into the one other story I remember with this, uh, with this episode. But this and uh, – Two and a Half Men, another great sitcom, uh, were filmed on the same property. Uh, that that's another one of the shows that I always love to watch when I get home. Yes. It's really, these two, especially as of late. And uh, well, on that show, uh, the kid was pretty much the only kid on the show most of the time. Yeah. And so I, I spent a full day. I might have gone into a second day when I did the show, but. The full day I was on set, you know, I'm not re- filming the whole day. And so rather than just kind of waiting in a trailer with my mom or by myself or whatever, they would uh, they would put us together, uh, two uh-huh. kids, because he's a couple years older than me and the show was going on about the same time. And they were literally a studio or two over. And so we would always be able to hang out. And obviously we wouldn't talk about acting because, again, too young to really understand everything. But it was just kind of cool. I feel like more for him because he's doing that like every day, yeah. right? Uh, but we were able to be together and stuff. That's cool. That's cool. It, it made it, yeah, kept me company. Yeah. I kept him company. <laughs> he was funny as hell in that show. That's another one of a yeah, kind, yeah, right? Yeah. It's funny, you know, now because mainly like streaming stuff, Peacock has King of Queens, all, all, all these shows. And so now it's once I realize that all these shows are on Peacock, it, it, that's yeah. where it gets dangerous. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> I've got my two favorite things, King of Queens and Harry Potter on Peacocks. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's always two, right? You got to have the one show and then there's always a movie or two on there and you can ride that out for a long time. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, Wild Hogs, another one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. I love Tim Good. Allen. I love John Travolta, Martin Lawrence especially. I love Martin Lawrence. I used to watch Martin all the time when I was a kid. Um, Funny guy, yeah. Your scene was uh, like Tommy, or uh, was it Tommy? It was, it was with John Travolta in the beginning of yeah, the show. Yeah, you were raking his leaves. <laughs> raking the leaves. Yeah, so that one was a kind of a crazy roller coaster on that part. Yeah. Um, I originally, when I when I did my first audition, I auditioned for Tim Allen's son, and I don't know what happened. I uh, didn't get the role. 
you know, no big deal. And then I get a call later saying, Hey, there's this part in the movie, you know, went straight to the callback for that. Cause they already knew who I was and kind of took off from there. Um, John Travolta show up to the scene to do the scene with them. You know, fantastic actor. Yeah. He was already locked in on character. So, you know, we're enemies in that movie. <laughs> and so he introduces, or I get introduced to him, you know, being enemies. He, he was already in character. He kind of said, Hey, and like, I was like, oh, this guy is, he's so mean. <laughs> this is my first encounter with a, with an adult actor who just genuinely does not want to be around kids. So I thought, and then we ended up getting together at the premiere and friendliest guy. Yeah. And uh, my assumption was he was just in character already. He didn't change from that throughout the course of the scene, but you know, getting to meet all those guys, those are all legendary actors as well. That's super cool. That is awesome. John. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, it's pretty crazy. It just kind of goes back to all the stuff I did. Yeah. Yes. It's cool for all my friends and stuff to realize this was a big part of our childhood, but a lot of the, the actors and actresses that I worked with are huge names. And at the time, you know, I either knew who they were barely or didn't even know them. Um, I just, it, it was a, culture shock almost like as i'm getting older watching these some of these movies that are on yeah. again i'm like I, I i met these guys kevin james all the wild hogs cast eddie murphy you know all these people i didn't even realize it at the time i can't imagine how my mom just always kind of stood in the background like i'd be fanboying all over these people <laughs> now <laughs> me too <laughs> yeah it's it's crazy Especially Kevin James. <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh, Kevin James. I, I wish I could talk more about him. It <laughs> seems like a great guy. Yeah, we've. Uh, yeah. He, sorry. Go ahead, Jenna. Like he is. I was just gonna say he seems like he is. Yeah, he's my. Well, boy. We'll get him on the show yeah. soon, right? Hopefully, that's that's the dream. Um, we we've we've, we've talked to a lot of uh, actors and actresses on on here. And they've all, you know, said the same thing that every one of you guys have said that he's a super nice guy. Um, and Jerry Stiller also, they've they've uh, told us some great stories about Jerry Stiller. Um, yeah. So yeah, we we've heard heard a lot of great things so far, which is awesome. It's really awesome to hear that. Well, yeah, a lot of my friends are always like, "Oh, you must have these guys in your contacts, right? Like, just hit them <laughs> up or something." I, I, I'd love to get a hold of Kevin James and be like, "Come join us on the podcast." But one, <laughs> one episode. Yeah. Two, I, I, I was. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's not not too much I'm going to be able to do. I'm sorry. Well, hey, I was the guy that threw baby carrots at you. Remember me? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, with the one of his thousands of shows and movies that he did hey maybe maybe there'd be something there i don't yeah. know yeah <laughs> yeah that's awesome um out of all the like tv shows and movies that you've done what is like the favorite role that you've had um in your career that is a good question um it's hard not to say daddy daycare yeah. just because on my side of things it was like the first thing i did uh, especially on camera, but in terms of, you know, not just my friends, but, you know, and our age range, but our parents and stuff who showed their kid, uh, you know, the kids, the movie, um, the, at least when it first came out now, every once in a while, or if I'm meeting people and someone brings it, I will never ever go up to somebody and introduce myself that way. Yeah. Uh, someone's going to have to bring it up, which, you know, more times than right. not, it happens. But in terms of like the leading, hey, you know, this is he was in this. It, it's usually daddy daycare. So in terms of the popularity it, it brought me, I, I would say it's daddy daycare. Even though kind of like this, I was super young. I don't really remember much from it. Um, but it's hard not to say that one is, you know, up there at the top. So. When we uh, when we posted uh, about you being on our podcast in the King of Queens fan group, and again the King of Queens fan group on Facebook has like over forty thousand people in it, so it yeah really? it's it's still yeah. huge. Like everybody still watches it every day till this day, and they keep like, hey, that's uh, Crispin from Daddy Daycare. <laughs> <But> yeah, <laughs> <I know what laughs> yeah. <I have. laughs> yeah, well, so 
the recent like jump start of everything was I got a text from one of my friends maybe about a month ago that if you go on to Netflix, I don't think it's there anymore, but about a month ago, Daddy Daycare was on the top 10 uh, like what to watch or hot movies to watch on Netflix. And so all of a sudden I started getting a lot of just random stuff from all over the place again, just people like, oh, you know, we were that age growing up and we were watching the movie and we want to see like where the kids are now and stuff. And so I thought it was funny. And uh, that's just kind of, it re took off, which is always fun. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. That's so cool. I pr- I'm pretty sure we just watched that movie not too long ago. Yeah. And so now I'm trying to like, yeah, it work anymore now because I'm old, but I'm like, I have to rewatch it to see like which one he is. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you won't miss it. And I just shaved too. And I, I swear, I'm just looking at the camera right now. I look exactly the same. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like ringing a bell, but I'm like, I have to <laughs> double check. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go I, and watch it after this. Yeah, I, I had chubbier cheeks, but about everything else is kind of exactly the same. So you you, you won't miss it. Um, yeah, <laughs> what a time. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, I'm going to like pop out five quick questions for you, and you just gave me the answer on the top of your head, man. All right, right, I'm ready. ready? All right, favorite movie? Ooh, Step Brothers. Yes, classic. Become best friends. (laughs) Really? Yes. Uh, There, there's so many up there, but I'm I'm a big comedy guy. It's got to be Step Brothers. Yeah, good. Um, Favorite TV show? Great one. Oh well, how can I not say King of Queens? Um, can't go wrong with King of Queens, two and a half men. The office of course is on there. I rewatch that like no other, uh, all my friends get tired of it, but that, that's still my go-to, uh, probably that. Have you ever seen uh Shit's Creek? I have, I I've never watched it from start to finish, but a couple of my friends dabbled in it a little yeah. bit. And so I'd always slide yeah. in and see what's going on. So I'm familiar. Um, you know, the dad in that, Eugene Levy, was my dad in Over the Hedge. He was the porcupine in that. I was the baby porcupine. Ah, he was the dad no in that. No way. So that, that's how I, I don't recognize him from American Pie. Yeah. I don't recognize him from anything else he's done. I, you hear the voice, and I'm like, I sat right next to that dude recording lines. That that's how I know. That is awesome. <laughs> that's cool. That is, I love Eugene yeah. Levy. He is funny, so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, favorite food at a ballpark. At a ballpark. Well, the runner-up is going to be mayo and hot dog <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> um. Oh man, ballpark food is just so expensive. It really is. Uh, I, I try to get food before there you I go. go, but. Um, I mean, you can't go wrong with just hot dog. I'm a big ketchup relish guy. Um, but you know, a lot of the stadiums now have all the like name brand stuff and, uh, Angel Stadium has uh, a chronic taco there. I don't know if that's out on the East coast there. Not sure how big of a chain it is, but it's a a pretty, it's a solid chain out here. We man like uh, like chronic taco. Did we man own it or. Was it? I have no idea, but sounds like something he'd get into. Yeah, right? I think they had one here, or no, it was Wicked Taco, not Chronic Taco. Never yeah, I don't, I, ah, it's all the yeah, same. Right. Right? <laughs> um, well, that's the thing about California. They have the best food. I'm just saying. Well, so what I will say, the favorite thing to get at a ballpark, even though it's not really in the ballpark, and I don't know if you guys have these out there, but – Really big at Dodger Stadium, and then it's kind of making its way south into Orange County with the Angels and Ducks. But the outside the stadium where they make the hot dogs for you right on the grill, like right in front of the stadium, it's like a hot dog cart. It's called Street Meat. I don't know if that's a thing at other stadiums. Not, but now I want that. <laughs> and it's a, it's a little bit, not much now, but it's a little bit cheaper than the ballpark hot dog, and they throw uh, – you can get mayonnaise on it. 
but they throw veggies and all this onions, all this stuff on it. And that's got to be the actual go-to, but that's not the in the ballpark. Almost sounds like a Chicago dog to me. Ne- I- I'm sure at Wrigley they have to have something yeah. like that outside. It's kind of like that. What if you guys are ever out here? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like they have a pickle on it and stuff like that. It's, it's oh. really good. Nice. Okay. Yeah, if you guys ever get out, out here and you're leaving a stadium, SoFi, you know, they have it at SoFi, that, that's what I would recommend, okay. 100%. Nice. I'm going to try it. All right. We're supposed to go out to California in a few months, so I'm going to be like, let's go to there a dog. you go. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the hot dog, not even for the baseball. Right. Who cares about it? <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, couple more questions. Favorite drink? Ooh, how uh, PG are we keeping? Uh, you don't have you. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm drinking a John Daly right now, man. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that because I'm off to the side here, just kind of sipping on Pacifico. Pacifico. Yeah. Um, I don't know, favorite. I, I'm a Dr Pepper guy or a Barks root beer, but it's got to be Barks. Yes. Yes, it's good. Yeah, I don't really have a fifth question. <laughs> I thought I had a fifth I question. Know. I don't have a fifth question. Jenny, you got a fifth hey, question? If it comes to mind, I'm I'm here. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. Well, good, man. Um, dude, we, we really appreciate you coming on and, you know, and talking about your career and all that. And we really appreciate you being on with us, man. For sure. I'm super stoked you guys reached out. This is awesome. Uh obviously followed you guys been listening as of late um i'm honestly surprised i haven't heard of anything before so definitely got to keep getting the word out for you guys Appreciate that'd be it. yeah it's still going I'd love out to see this thing grow yeah awesome. yeah I'm, I'm sure yeah we're s- so I, I do recognize we are a, a a man short today i know you mentioned we lost one uh what happened it's got busy man life got busy I feel that that's how it goes. Yeah, he um he started this podcast actually. Yeah. So he um okay. he started his podcast and he posted something on the King and Queens Facebook group looking for a uh, co-host and I saw his his post immediately and I had to you know jump on it real quick. Um which is which awesome. was uh he he picked me which was awesome cuz he was like, "Man, I you know, cuz I used to do King and Queen TikToks all the time cuz I do, I do TikToks all the time now." And now that, you know, I was watching one of your episodes or I was listening to one of the more recent episodes yeah. and I heard you put out a couple videos that went big. Oh time. yeah. I've got almost a half a million followers now. So, um, I, I do not have a TikTok, but I will make sure to check it out through one of my friends. Just, uh, just, be, <laughs> just be ready. <laughs> I do a lot of crazy I'm stuff ready. on there, <laughs> but it's all relatable comedy. I do like comedy of, on, on marriage and um parenting and stuff like that stuff that i've been through with my marriage and my kids and all that stuff and it's it's all true comedy so i love yeah. it i'll definitely give that a listen I appreciate it, man um yeah but yeah it's uh I, I, we, we do appreciate you coming on um really awesome to have you on for sure it's it's crazy man. yeah it's always nice to talk about this yeah. stuff uh I don't really, as I kind of mentioned, it's not something that I would go out of my way to talk about. But when anyone ever asks me anything, I mean, I'm an open book. So to have you guys reach out and more than happy to spend some time on here and talk about everything. Because, you know, I, I mentioned at the beginning that, you know, other stuff was more of a priority for me in the beginning, uh, you know, towards the end of acting. But it doesn't take away anything from the fact that a lot of fun. Yeah. I loved it and the experience and, I was one of the, I was one of the luckier ones that you know had a fairly successful childhood acting career, and so to be able to share those experiences and stuff, it was pretty cool. Now it's not something I really plan to get back into. Kind of sticking with the family business now, yeah. um, but it's nice to know it's always there if I do want to go back into it. But in the meantime, I'm good to kind of sit on a podcast or two and just talk about it. So yeah, man. If you ever want to be like a, you know, regular guest and watch an episode and we quiz you on the episode, just let us know. We'd love to have you back on. Yeah, man. You know, I, I, I'm I'm totally in. Uh, I As soon as you reached out saying that you sometimes do quizzes for the for the actors that come on, 
that that's kind of the main reason I wanted to rewatch. I'm like, I can't go on this thing and go like, <laughs> oh for five or whatever, you know. And then that's when I kind of realized that yeah, you know, I'm do know a little bit more. But yeah, you know, I've especially weirdly like a couple weeks before you guys reached out, you know, it was on and I started watching it. I'm like, oh man, I missed this show and started watching a little bit more. Yeah, hey, if you guys ever want me back, I'd love to come back. Well, that's how I contacted yeah. you, man, because I was watching that episode, and I was like, I'm going to find out what this kid's name is. And, and then I was like, holy crap, this hey, is the kid from Daddy like Daycare. of age now. Yeah, I was like, man, this is the kid from Daddy yeah, Daycare. To- I was like, oh, I got I to hit him up, man. I got I to gotta contact him. <laughs> Not to make anyone feel too old by any means, but that was about 18 years ago now. Yeah, I'm 36. I now. feel old every day. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so – <laughs> oh, well, I, I'm 26. A lot of my friends are, you know, giving me a hard time now. So <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's it's funny. One of my uh, right before I was going to come on here, you know, I was watching the show. I posted a picture on my Instagram of like, hey, any fans like come check it out. I'm going to be on the podcast today. Um, and one of my friends FaceTime me. She's like, I just watched this this episode. I did not even realize it was you. Oh, I had the glasses and everything, uh, the baseball cap on. But I was like, yeah, she's like, there's one common theme with all your roles, Shane. It's the fact that you, you're kind of a little brat in all of them. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, hey, maybe it's just not acting. That's why I'm getting all these roles. I, I don't know. But she had no idea, and she had literally just watched it. And so she was cracking up as soon as I posted it because – I mean, the glasses, I, I've never worn glasses, but, you know, just kind of a, a, a discovery. Yeah. So, That's awesome. Anyway, I, I don't want to keep too much of your time. I'm sorry. But, no, again, thank you guys for having me. This was this was a blast. Oh, well, we, we, we appreciate it. it. We thank you, man. So we're definitely going to hold awesome. you coming back on. <laughs> Do it. I'm around. And we have guests on every I, I work, and then I love that. Yeah. I know there were a couple times you guys had some other actors on, gave those a listen too. Obviously, I wasn't in those episodes, but you guys are killing it. I, I love it. I can't wait to see what you guys have in store. Well, that, and we also like uh, have like guests uh, that are fans of the show. Like we'll like post something on the King of Queens fan page and see if uh, one of the fans want to be, you know, on our podcast, and we quiz them to see how big of a fan they are of King of yeah. Queens. I love it. How, how have people been doing? Pretty they good, man. Really good. Spot on. Oh yeah. How about that? I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> Die hard. Well, man. like I used to be a guest on the show, and mm-hmm. I rewatched it like several times just to yeah. make sure. <laughs> You're like, you can't yeah. up. <laughs> yep. I got you a hundred percent. And now here you are. That's amazing. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we had to have her on. She was just. She was so funny, and that freaking laugh was just contagious. And we had to, she, I mean, she'd have been a perfect uh, co host for it. us. Absolutely. Man. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Right on, right on. Um, if, uh, if you don't mind, stay on after we stop recording. Um, but uh, we appreciate you again for uh, joining us and talking King of Queens and talking, talking your episode, man. Absolutely. Again, thanks for having me. We'll stay in touch. All right, guys. Everybody have a great night.